there's actually, and a lot of people don't know this, there's actually a difference between living in the last days and living in the end of time. Growing up all her life, she's always heard that we're living in the last days. So it's so funny that if when she was a little girl and she was hearing it from her grandparents that we're in the last days, just imagine how much closer we really are to the coming of Jesus in today's day than ever before. Whether you're post-trib or pre-trib. Uh, that, or I know mid-trib. That's, There's mid-trib. Too. Oh, that's, okay, that's debatable. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to A Day is Coming podcast. My name is Daniel. And my name is Josie, and today is episode number nine. Today, we are going to be talking about the last days and how close we really are to that point. Yeah, so we got a good one for you guys today. Honestly, we are in the last days currently, and that's the simple answer. That's like straight up. Like if you guys like wanted to know like a answer up front instead of like waiting halfway through the video, we are currently right now in the end days. Yep. And as a believer, you would know this if you just kind of take a look at the world around you. And if you can see the things that are going on, you would definitely know that. Really, if you know, though, like even like our grandparents, like we're saying this, they were they, they were saying for as long as I can remember, like your grandparents, um, my grandparents know because they never really grew up in the church. Um, but your parents, <laughs> yeah, my grandma, I'm just laughing cause oh. my grandma, um, she's, o- she's always said since I was a little girl, she's always said that we're living in the end days that we're living in the last days. And she said that growing up all her life, she's always heard that we're living in the last days. So it's so funny that if when she was a little girl and she was hearing it from her grandparents that yeah. we're in the last days, just imagine how much closer we really are to the coming of Jesus in today's day than ever before because if we were in the last days when she was a little kid then we're definitely much closer to the return of jesus than ever before (laughs) it's like it's like everybody's just like like in their in their lifetime everybody has been like everybody has grown up in the church and and, you know and obviously knows these things everybody has said the same thing at one point in time in their life that wow like all the things going on in their lifetime wow we really are in the end days Mm -hmm. and we are currently saying the same thing as well right now you know we're we're currently living in in the end days in the last days and uh, there's actually a bit of a fun fact here and the thing is that there's actually and a lot of people don't know this um Mm -hmm. there's actually a difference between living in the last days and living in the end of time in the end times living in the last days is a period of time that we are currently in right now and that's what's called the church age, which is the period that began with the birth of the church in the beginning of the New Testament throughout the ministry of Jesus. So at the very beginning, when Jesus started his ministry from that point on forth, that's when the church was born, because before that, there was no such thing as a church. We know this because we just take a look at the New Testament. We, we can understand that, that the church started from the moment that the ministry of Jesus began. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that same church age that we're currently in right now right which is the last days actually ends with the rapture of the church who are the born again believers will be caught up in the air to meet him in that day whenever that day is we do not know that but this is this is the the kind of what goes into what you were saying um everybody's been saying this in their lifetime and they're Mm -hmm. actually not wrong because they're living in the last days we're living in the last days their parents and grandparents before they were living in the last days because that's the period in time that's that literally began from the moment that the ministry of jesus began it's it's almost like a clock like the clock started like officially the clock to the beginning of the beginning of the end started when jesus began his ministry and living in the end times begins with the biblical events that take place after the church has been raptured, which is all those events that follow after that are going to be the tribulation, you know, the man of, the man of lawlessness reveals himself, the mark of the beast, um, and then comes the second coming of Christ, and then so on and so forth. So depending on where you're at, um, you know, whether you're post-trib or pre-trib. Uh, that, or I know mid-trib. That's, There's mid-trib. Too. Oh, that's, okay, that's debatable. Um, but... Depending on what side of the spectrum you're at, you know, we definitely believe that according to the scriptures, pre-trip, God is coming. Uh, We are going to be raptured before we enter into the period of tribulation. So like Danny said, that topic is up for debate because everybody like the church isn't really like united when it comes to that area. But that's not a that's not really it doesn't really determine your salvation or not. Like you don't go to heaven yeah. or hell if you believe exactly. post mid it's not or, a, you know, yeah. it doesn't really matter what you, what you believe of when God's coming. The fact of the matter is that Jesus is coming. Exactly. So, 
So you you pretty much so you pretty much have free range of what you want to believe in that area. I do believe that there's a truth. It has to be one or the other. Um, but are we certain about it? I don't know. I feel like the church hasn't really come into agreement with one of them. So hey, I Jesus know, coming. You know, so we, that's we, all that matters. We definitely know what what we believe in. Um, so. Yeah, we, we believe just, that we Jesus is coming. Yeah, that we stick Jesus to the scriptures. Coming. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we believe that Jesus is coming before the tribulation begins to pick up his church so that we are not there for the tribulation. But then again, like we said, it's up for debate. I've always so found this you interesting. You guys can fight it out in the comments. I I've always I've always found this very interesting because like I just topics like this I've always found interesting, but that's just me. But, you know, back to what we were saying, right? So, you have Living in the last days, which is a period in time that we're in now, and then you have living in the end of times, which is what's going to happen after the fact. So after we get raptured. So we're not there yet. We're not there at that point in time. So referring to the last days, it's gone by many different terms, including like the final hour, um, the final days. These are all terms that have been given by the New Testament church since the beginning because of, I guess you say, because of the imminence or the sense of urgency of the rapture of the church. Yeah. So these are all things that, these are all different terms that have been given by the church. Yeah, and the Bible talks a lot about how we're supposed to be ready at all times because Jesus is coming back soon and in a time and hour we don't expect. So basically, don't let your guard down thinking that you have more than enough time before Jesus comes so that you, you know, you're going to go ahead and keep living a life of sin because you have quote unquote time. You have to make sure that you get right with God before he comes because if God is tugging on your heart to stop a certain thing that is not right in his eyes, then you want to do that because that just goes to show God's love for you mm -hmm. because just like a father will correct his children when he's when they're doing the wrong thing, it's the same way God does with us. So if we're doing something that is not right, he's going to correct us because he's a loving father and he doesn't want to see us mess up or to see the bad consequence qu consequences of our actions come back and like you know hurt us yeah and you know what i've i've learned that to like to a to a more personal level with our own kids because we're not parents and god is our father so yeah. it's it's actually perfect because you can kind of see from his perspective why sometimes he he has to discipline us why sometimes he has to correct us and why you know he's he does it in a loving way sometimes he does it in, in a mm -hmm. in a stern way and, and it's all because he loves you you know if if god does not love you then he's not going to correct you yeah exactly and that right there would be the scary part yeah that's, exactly that's so a parent that doesn't love you they're going to let you do whatever you want and they won't care about the consequences that happen to you because they don't love you so that's why this sense of urgency that the church has it's so important and personally i find it beautiful because it just shows like a true love towards god and a true reverence toward him it's like we're so expectant and we're so excited for his coming that it's like we have to tell everyone like we're in the last days we're in the last days like it's like urgent like receive jesus now before it's too late and it's it's beautiful i, I really find it so beautiful it's like you know so in the bible it refers a lot to you know christ being yeah um the bridegroom and then us and then the church being the bride the bride of christ so it's like imagine like your wedding day and you're just so excited for like your husband to come and pick you up and it's like you're just so expectant like he's coming he's coming like he's coming soon mm -hmm. and um you never want to lose your urgency don't ever let anyone um make you lose your urgency because once you lose your urgency is when jesus will come and you won't be ready and you will have lost your chance for repentance so in revelations 3 3 it says here remember then what you have received and heard keep it and repent if you are not alert i will come like a thief in the night and you will not have no idea at what hour i will come upon you and it also says in revelations 3 11, i am coming soon hold on to what you have so that no one takes your crown so that means in other words like be so be like keep that urgency keep you know, that fear of God that he's coming at any moment. You want to make sure that you're always living right. That way you don't have to 
worry that you're not right when Jesus comes. And it also says here in Revelations 3.19, as many as I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be zealous and repent. If you guys notice, the main theme with these verses is repent. Mm -hmm. I feel like God is trying to get this message out there to the church, to everyone, that you need to repent in order to go to heaven. You need to repent in order to be right with him when he comes because if you don't repent, then then you you still have that you, you're still accountable for that sin you know what i'm saying because when you repent yeah. and when you lay it out on on the feet of christ then he washes you clean with his blood but if you don't repent then you're gonna have to you know give an account for for all of that yeah that's true so and it also says here in revelation 16 15 look i am coming like a thief Blessed is the one who is alert and remains clothed so that he may not go around naked and people see his shame. In other words, be alert, remain clothed in righteousness. Make sure you're living right so that that way when Jesus comes, you're not caught off guard and you're not caught in your shame. In other words. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That was good. Um, And, and kind of kind of going a, a little bit in hand with what you were saying um the bible actually even tells us that there are signs that we will know as the church that we are currently right now in the last days um in second timothy it says in chapter three verses one through five it says and i'll read it, it says but understand this that in the last days there will come a times there will come times of difficulty people will be lovers of self lovers of money proud arrogant abusive disobedient to their parents ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good. They're treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God, having an appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. So that right there is a sign to you as a reader, as, as a believer, that literally we are in the last days because you can see that happening around you and you can see, you know, sure, you can say that, you know, all of these characteristics um, that apply to such people have been around since the beginning of time. But the thing is, I definitely believe that these things have gotten a lot, a lot worse. Um, you can't compare like people now, like, I mean, just look at our culture currently right now mm -hmm. in, in the U.S., for example. Yeah. You can't tell me that currently right now this is not like at, at, at its all-time high because yeah. I, I really do believe that what you, what i just finished reading to you in these verses are currently at, at its all-time high in the u.s yeah for and example I, in our culture and i'd like to add something if you don't mind yeah, go, go for um it. so the part in this scripture that really stands out to me a lot is the part where it says here lovers i'm sorry is a part that it says here, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. I feel like that's a specific warning that God's giving the church, the body of Christ. So my pastor is always preaching about a church that, you know, if you're in a church that's not on fire for God, to run, like avoid it at all costs because the time is so short. Time is so fragile. Yep. Jesus is coming at any moment and we need to be living um, ready and, and right. And you don't have time to waste being in a church that isn't on fire for God and doesn't believe the fullness of the gospel, the fullness of the power that comes with receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, getting baptized by the Holy Spirit in fire, which, you know, power comes with that. So you don't want to be in a church that has the appearance of holiness and everything. Um, and they're preaching Jesus, but they're denying the power that comes with being a believer that comes with being baptized in the Holy spirit and fire. Um, so I felt like I just needed to say that because we're living in the last days. So if you guys are in a church that doesn't believe the power that comes with being a Christian, like and avoid those people. I, I would say find another church. <laughs> That's a bold statement to <laughs> yeah, make. I would but say get out I like as it. soon as possible and find another church because you don't have time to waste. You don't have time to be sitting around somewhere where your fire is going to be held at a certain level. Like it's like you're you're dimming your fire because ultimately when you're at a church and you have um, the head of the church, which is your pastor, your pastor that's pouring into you 
can either make you or break you. It can yeah. either um, launch you into your purpose and calling that God has for you or hold you back. So you don't want to be somewhere where the pastor's holding you back because he doesn't believe, he's denying the power so, of Christ. Yeah, so that's actually like really good what you just finished saying here because like I was saying, um, these these things have been getting worse and I really do think that the more time progresses, I think that the worse that these things are gonna get. So yeah, it is. It's almost like the Bible says it, like things are not gonna things are not supposed to get better for the world from this point on forth. Mm -hmm. Uh things will be good for us for, uh, as the believers as a church because we are children of God and not not I'm not trying to sound like better and higher than anybody else, but that's the truth, you know. Yeah. That's kind of like that's, that's the benefit of that's the benefit having of, Jesus in your life. Yeah, exactly. It's so it's like a, he's our hedge of protection. He protects us. So yeah, and, we only go from glory to glory. And, and the Bible says that he's our strong tower. So, you know, whenever these things are getting worse for the for the, the world, world, things are, are we're gonna be protected because he's our strong tower. So we're not gonna be part of that. We're not gonna be that's not gonna be our portion. We are so 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 close to the literally to the end of the end of days because we are in the end of days like i said we've been in the end of days since the beginning of the church um but the end of the end of days but we at this point in time right now we are at the end of the end of yeah, days exactly and then we're raptured right so there's a whole nother video that we can make on this on the whole what what happens after that point in time but for the sake of the video, you know, I just want to explain this part. Um, and I'm going to read Matthew t chapter 24. It says here, um, and he said on the Mount of Olives and the disciples came to him privately saying, tell us well, when these things will happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of age. Um, and then Jesus answered them and he said, see that no one leads you astray for many will come in my name saying that I am the Christ and that they will lead many astray and that you will hear of wars and of rumors of wars and see that you are not alarmed for this must take place but the end is not yet for many nations <clears throat> for many nations will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places and all of these things are but the beginning of the birth pains so i'm gonna touch on that last sentence right there but think about this if you're thinking that these signs like if, if you're thinking that, okay, this is nothing new, right? Like everything that I just finished reading, like Jesus is explaining what are the signs of the end of the age. And he's telling you that there will be wars, rumors of wars. Um, all of these things have to take place. Um, nation is going to be going up against nation. Um, there's going to be chaos pretty much throughout the whole world. Um, there's going to be famines. There's going to be earthquakes. So in, none of these things are you can say that they're new. They have been happening since, essentially since the beginning of the world. You can see at that very last sentence when it says all of these are, are but the beginning of birth pains. You're a mom. You're a wonderful mom. But you would know better than, and, and you can explain this better, what happens when you're in labor pains? Like, like literally, like explain real quick, like what happens? There's like stages to it. So at the beginning... It's like softly, it's like you're like in stage one and then you enter into like stage two where it starts to get a little, a little worse and you enter to stage three. I think there's like four stages. I don't, I don't remember, but there's stages to it. And the closer you get to the birth, the, the labor pains are like crazy exactly. strong and hard and horrible and exactly. painful. Mm -hmm. And then, but what happens with the intensity? It intensifies so when you mm -hmm. right when, yeah, when you've course. had like one or two contractions then you were having not towards the end you're yeah, having a back course. to back, to back, to, to back yeah the contraction starts exactly. to get closer and closer together exactly so right there like if you think okay all of these things that i just finished like reading that all of these things have been happening since the beginning of time and they, and they essentially have but the sign that you're gonna that you're going to get and the sign that he's specifically talking about is is how things are going to be getting worse how all of these things that are going to be happening are going to be getting worse towards the end and that you're going to see these things repeat themselves a lot more frequently towards the end if you look back just take 600 years if you look back from that point in time and you take for example wars you 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 can see that progressively and all of these things have been recorded throughout history so you can actually search this up you you see that 
600 years from then to now, you see that there's a lot more wars happening and things have been intensifying towards now. From the amount of wars that we've already had in the 21st century, we're just at the turn of the 21st century. And from the amount of wars that we've already had now, we're already on the path as a, as a planet to going into more wars than ever before in any other point in time in history. You can just see that what Jesus is talking about here is yet again, another prophecy that's literally has, has been coming to pass right in front of our faces. So you can understand that things have been getting worse. Mm -hmm. And he says that all of these are but the beginning of labor pains. This is the beginning and the end of the last days is nothing but the beginning of the labor pains. Um, and it's eventually going to lead up to the tribulation. But no one knows the hour of the day. The Bible's clear on this when it is that at, at whatever point in time that is that we are going to be raptured up in, into the air. That's going to mark the end of the end of days. Um, but at this point in time, we're just we, we as Christians, we just should be living our our lives, obviously not in fear. The point of this video is not to be, you know, to just throw fear at anybody because mm -hmm. that's not that's not how God moves. Uh, the point of this video is for us to let you guys know if you already did not know these things and, and show you guys, hey, like we are currently living in the end days um, and the end of days. And this is the point in time where if you have not already like straightened up your relationship with God, yeah. this is the point where you do. The point of this video is to let you guys know that there the sense of urgency that there is in the time that we're living in. And even though, um, like I said, nobody's going to know that day, but it can happen at any point in time. So it's just a matter of time before it does happen. So why not get your relationship with God and, and everything and all your affairs straightened up um, and then live your life in accordance to how the word says. So that way you can be ready and you can be blameless whenever God returns back for his church. So that's that's the point. That's the point that I'm, and that we're trying to make here yeah, is good. that there is a very big urgency in the time and people are either sleeping or people are just are, are just passively going by their their you know their everyday lives and they just don't care because they think they have time um they think that there's time and, and or, or simply they're just too preoccupied in their in their everyday lives they're too preoccupied with the things that they want to accomplish and do and and you never know and their priorities may not be straightened out they may have god at the the very last of the list and mm -hmm. they probably don't even have god in the list whatsoever yeah. so that's that's what we're telling you guys these things and if you are even if you don't believe in god and you just stumbled upon this video we're letting you guys know that there is a sense of urgency here um you can see like you may not understand the bible but you can see the day and age that we're living in now you can see the things that are happening now and we're telling you what the bible says that it has already predicted these things as a sign to you so that you can realize wait a minute these things have already been written in this book for a very long time now um mm -hmm. and they actually come into pass in front of my very eyes um so this actually has to be true because there's literally way too many prophecies for it to even be considered a coincidence in the bible that have um, been fulfilled that have been already fulfilled and that are currently being fulfilled the chances of something of even just two or three prophecies being fulfilled that that jesus already did in the bible the that number is literally astronomical so just imagine the hundreds of prophecies that are already been fulfilled so yes we have been in the end of the end of days already for a long time now but like i said the rapture can happen literally in the blink of an eye yeah and in Revelation 12, 12, it tells us that terror will come on the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. So obviously the time is going to, um, so obviously as time progresses, things are going to continue to get worse on the earth. It's not going to get better. But that terror will only be felt by those who aren't abiding in God. Because in Acts 2, 17, it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. So this verse shows us a promise of revival before the rapture. So I believe right now we're living in the biggest movement of the Holy Spirit ever in yep. ever in the history of man. And the reason being is because God is opening a door for his Holy Spirit to be outpoured on all flesh so that everyone can hear about Jesus before he comes. So that mm -hmm. way no one has an excuse. Oh, I, I never heard. I never heard the gospel. I, I never heard about Jesus. 
No, everyone's going to have a chance to hear about Jesus and choose whether and choose whether to serve Jesus and follow him or follow the devil. Because if you don't accept Jesus into your heart, then you're going to be forced to serve the devil and do exactly what he is telling you to do. Yeah. And God doesn't want that. He loves you so much that he sent his one and only begotten son to die on that cross for your sins. So that if you just believe in Jesus Christ and you receive him into your heart, that you would be saved and you would go to heaven. And it's crazy because we were just talking about how grandmas have been saying that it's the end of days for the longest. You know, it's been years and years and years and years and years that people have been saying it's the end of days. But that just shows the love and mercy God has for us. In Second Peter good. 3, 9, it says, The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some may count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any of you should perish, but that all should reach repentance. So God is literally taking his sweet time to send his son Jesus back to come pick up his church because he wants everyone to have had a chance to receive Jesus into their heart because he doesn't want no one to go to hell. He wants everyone to repent of their sins and to serve him because God created us like he rightfully so wants us to just love him because I mean he has all the right to want that he's like imagine you creating something and it you know it's not mm. it doesn't want you like he created us for him he loves us and he wants us to love him back um and it also says here in second Corinthians 6 2 for he says at an acceptable time I listened to you and in that day of salvation, I helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. So in other words, if there's any day to give your life to Jesus, it's today. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait until tomorrow because tomorrow's not guaranteed. But anyways, we are living in the last days and stay ready and hold on to, to that crown so no one takes it from you. We love you guys so much. God bless you. Peace.